Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to have a look at sketching subsets of the complex plane and a very fascinating area it is too. This area is called loci which comes from the Latin word which means a path. Locus is a path and loci is the plural. Now what we're doing is we're having a geometrical conditional constraint and we're then turning that into an algebraic equation which we can then go on and sketch on the Argan diagram. For example, uh, if we had, now let's just go through this, curly bracket means the set of numbers, the set of numbers Z such that the real part of Z equals 6. That could be restated as X equals 6. P pretty simple. And we could then go ahead and sketch that on the Argan diagram as you see there. Okay? Very, very simple. This is the idea of what we're doing. We're converting a geometrical constraint into an algebraic relation. In this second example, I've got here the set of numbers Z such that the imaginary part of Z is less than twice the real part of Z, and that could be restated as Y is less than 2X. And we could draw that on the Argan diagram as I've done there. Now I need to put a little bit of a caveat here that in this current study design we are only supposed to draw subsets of the complex plane which comprise circles, points, lines and rays. Now this is not a, any of those, this is a region. But I just threw this in just for good measure in case, well, the unexpected happens in the exam. So there you have it. Now, I suppose I should uh, clarify what a ray means as opposed to a line. Well, you've seen lines since about year 9, like y equals x is a line. It's a continuous line going in the one direction and it has no beginning and it has no end, right? Whereas a ray is like a line but it emanates from a particular point and just goes from that point in the one direction continuously and but it doesn't go in the backwards direction as well. It goes forwards from a point in the direction which, which an arrow on the line then indicates, if you know what I mean. I'll show you as we go along, okay? Let's do an example. Example 1. On an Argan diagram, we are to sketch the subset S of the complex plane where S is a set of numbers Z such that the modulus of Z minus I is equal to 3. This means, ladies and gentlemen, that the modulus of Z minus I, or in other words, the distance of Z from the point where Z would equal I, is always three units, okay? Now, we're going to do this two ways. There's the algebraic way, which you can always do, and then there's the geometric intuitive way which you can sometimes do when you can just figure it out from spatial thinking about the geometry which is being specified here. Okay, so method A, algebraic, method B, spatial, geometric, intuitive. You can always do method A. Not always can you do method B, but usually you can as well. Okay, so here we go. This is the algebraic method. We have the modulus of Z minus I is equal to 3. Now we're going to split up that Z into its real and imaginary components. We're going to say Z is X plus I Y and we write it like that. Now I'm going to group the reals and the imaginaries. We've got two bits there which have got I's in front of them. So we can rewrite that as I've shown you there. Okay, The modulus of X plus I times Y minus 1 is equal to 3. Now we're going to convert that into a distance now. Using Pythagoras' theorem we can say that. You get it? And now we're going to square both sides and we've got a circle. If ever I saw a circle, that is a circle, isn't it? It's a circle with a centre of 0 and 1 coordinate points and a radius of 3. You know that, don't you? Of course you do. And there it is sketched for you on the Argan diagram. You can see this is the centre here and it goes up 3 and down 3 and of course it would do the same laterally, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. And I've shown the axis intercepts there in terms of x, haven't I? Now let's do method B, which is the intuitive geometric method. Now we're looking for all points which are exactly three units distant from 0 and 1, aren't we? Now let's just make a start and show you how that might look 
on the argand diagram. There's 0 and 1, and we've got a point, which obviously is 3 units distant from it, isn't it? Okay, laterally to the right, along the x direction, 1, 2, 3. Let's have a look for another point, which is 3 units distant from that central point there, yeah? There's one up three units. You can see it there. And another one to the left, three units. Yes, you're getting the idea, aren't you? Now, there's the one at the six o'clock position, three units down. Now, are you beginning to get a picture of what we might be looking for in terms of all points, the path of all points, which would be three units distant from that central point there? Well, I think you are. That's three units. There you go. Oh, there's another example, which we've already looked at. We've looked at that one. We've looked, there's, uh, that, that's that one again. There's that one, there's that one, and there, here's some more. You see? Of course, we're really looking at a circle. Of course we are. And that's the, the intuitive geometric way of doing this question, okay? So really, we have a circle center, naught and one coordinate points, and radius of three. Wow, this is fun, isn't it? So there's our equation, and we're good to go. Example 2. On an argand diagram, sketch the subset T of the complex plane, where T is a set of numbers such that the distance from the point I is equal to the distance from the point 2. So here comes method A, the algebraic method, and we've got that. Now we're going to use exactly the same procedure as I just used in the previous example. So we're going to call the zx plus iy. Now we're going to group the reals and the imaginaries within those modulus signs, like that. Okay, you see here I've grouped the i terms and over here I've grouped the non-i terms or the real terms, yeah? That's right. Now we're going to express that as an actual distance using the Pythagoras' theorem with the square root, like that. And now let's square both sides. Good. And we better multiply out those terms, this one here, multiply out those brackets, and we get that. And it's time for some cancellation throughout the nation. The x squareds go, and the y squareds go. Isn't that lovely? And what are we left with? That. Let's rewrite that without the negatives and do a little bit of simplification and we get that. Mm, mm, it's a straight line. It's a straight line. How amazing. We better try method B and we'll see where we get to with that. Okay, here are our two points where z equals i and z equals 2. And I'm going to draw a straight line between them as I've showed you there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is intuitively clear that a point which is equidistant from each of those points would be the midpoint of that line, wouldn't it? That point there. Midpoint of the line joining 0, 1 and 2, 0. But there's more. But <laughs> Wait, there's more. There are more points on the path of those points equidistant back to naught and 1 and 2 and naught. In fact, if we drew that line there, that red line, which is the perpendicular bisector of the line joining naught and 1 and 2 and naught, all of the points on that line, if you drew a straight line from any point on that line back to naught and 1 and also back to 2 and naught, you would find that those distances would be the same because if you looked at the geometry of it, you would have congruent triangles, yes? And it would be very easy to prove. So therefore, we've basically done it with an intuitive geometric method, yeah? Now, let's work out the equation now. Here is the sketch. Here is the sketch, okay? Uh, if I just did it the algebraic way, I would have had to sketch that line as well because it did ask us to sketch the subset, didn't it? Okay, so the gradient of the line AB, which I've called it now, is minus a half, and therefore the gradient of the perpendicular bisector would be plus 2, wouldn't it? Yeah. So all we've got to do now is come up with the equation of a line with a gradient of plus 2, which goes through this point here, the midpoint of the line joining A and B, and we're laughing. So the equation of a line passing through 1 and a half 
with a gradient of 2 is very easy to work out. It's just the old y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And there I've substituted the m, there's the y1, and there's the x1. And with a little bit of simplification throughout the nation, you get that, which is exactly the same result as we've got over there. Yeah, see, this is really good fun, this locust stuff.